Time to tweak us some administrative distance. We want to change the AD of this OSPF route so the RIP route for the exact same route and exact same prefix, prefix length will actually be preferred. And since RIP's AD is 120, we need to raise this to at least 121. Uh, I like to just go one over the AD when I'm changing administrative distances for a purpose like this because you don't want to just say, oh, okay, you know, 245 because that might be a lot higher than other protocols you don't want involved. So it's just a, it's just a good habit to just do, go one higher than you need to. Now, here's the thing with distance. We've got a couple of options as to how we can change the administrative distance. Sometimes it depends on the route type, and sometimes we may just want to set the distance for all OSPF routes. So let me show you the, the I want to say the first confusing part. It's the only confusing part because this really throws people when they first see it, because it did me the first time I saw it. I thought, well, okay, I'm gonna go in and change the AD of uh, some OSPF routes. Use distance, use iOS help, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna use a number here because I'm changing the OSPF administrative distance, which also seems to be described by the second line, OSPF distance. So which one am I gonna use? Which one is correct? And the answer is yes. Both of them are actually correct, as you'll see, it depends on the situation you're looking at. Here, what I want to do is just change the AD on all OSPF routes Router2 has, past and present. And for that, I'm just going to go distance 121. And my next option is an IP source address. And we see that I also have an option not to use any options, so I'm not going to do it. And I just set the distance to 121, so at this point, the RIP route should be preferred. Thing is, we know RIP converges a little slowly, so sometimes it might not be there yet. And it is there this time. Great, it's been there for nine seconds. Okay, that was fast. And you can see same route, same prefix length, and now RIP is preferred for it because we run show IP route OSPF. We see nothing, and of course we show IP route. I don't run this one that often with all the routes, but you can see RIP right there, 10110 via 172.12.123.1. Okay, so we've got that taken care of. What we do want to do, excuse me, what we do want to do is make sure that that OSPF route comes back into the table if the RIP route leaves. And to do that, of course, especially in the lab environment, we want to cut off the source of the RIP update. So we're just going to close the serial interface here on router 2. And we'll let the messages come on in, and then we'll do a show IP route rip. And that route is already gone. And okay, well, we do have the 10110 network, but now we've got another network. We only had one network before. Why do we have the second one? Well, you answer that out loud, and strangers stare at you. I talk to myself all the time, don't worry about it. Most of the time I have a microphone in front of me. <laughs> uh, we ping 10.1.1.1 from router 2. We have connectivity. That's exactly what we want to see. We can run a trace route, but literally at this point, there's only one way to get there, and that is via 31.1.3. So everything's fine there, but where are we getting that second network from? Why do we have that? We have that one because the 172.12.123.0 network, the one that is definitely burned into your brain after taking this course, that was a directly connected route as far as router 2 is concerned until we close the serial interface leading to the directly connected network. It doesn't matter that we still had the IP address and the mask on the interface. We didn't take that off. But once you shut the interface, that connected network is no longer connected. So now router 2 is learning about that via OSPF. So that's the way that particular option works. Now let's go back to the distance command and what I'll do first, actually now let's go back to the distance command. And I'll do an interface 010 and we'll do a no shut. And it looks like everything's back where it was. Let's do show IP route rip and then show IP route OSPF. And you can see the OSPF route is again preferred and it's got its default AD of 110. So we're right back where we were. Let's go into that distance command again now. So what about this business about the source address, that kind of thing? 
Well, what we can do is define the AD first off what we want it to be, but we can also say, okay, we want to change the AD for routes from this particular address. Now, that can, that can come in handy and you can see that the route is coming from 3113 so we should be all set there. I'm going to go ahead and put 3113 in and then my wildcard bits, okay. We know what that's going to be for that, tie that down. And we even have the option to put an ACL on. That's interesting, but we also have the option not to use options. So we'll put in distance 121, so I did exactly what we should have done. Or did I? Hmm, that AD has not changed. And I could do this all I want to, I think. Okay, well that AD definitely did not change as a result of me using that distance command. And I used the source interface and the whole bit. So we better figure something out. And actually we're gonna figure it out on the very next video because we're gonna go into that and then we'll take a look at those ACL options as well.